Spring isn't far away, and a lot of us need the outdoors more than ever. The oldest outdoor group in America, in fact, is challenging us all to spend at least two hours outside every week. Joining us from the Appalachian Mountain Club on Textination is Leadership Training Manager Colby Meehan. Thanks for being with us, Colby. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, there's still snow and cold in many parts of the country. You're in New Hampshire, so probably somewhere you are. It's a yes. chilly morning where I am. And March can be tricky, but, but you're saying that shouldn't keep us from getting outside. No, so it is. It's quite chilly still here in northern New Hampshire, and March actually tends to be one of our snowiest months. So I know that at this point in the pandemic, we're about a year in, and we could all use a little bit of joy in our lives. And so we're really focused on making the outdoors comfortable uh, for everybody. And so just thinking about a little bit of pre-trip preparation, whether it's going in your backyard on a scavenger hunt, maybe venturing to a local park, or maybe it's hiking a little local peak. So thinking about little things like layering and trip preparation and planning so you can go out and really thrive in the outdoors and enjoy your time there. Let's dive into that a little bit. What are some of the things that people can do? You talk about layering and, and planning and, and things. What, what should people be doing before they decide to, to venture out? Of course, we may have some people watching this from Florida, but for everybody yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So even though there's little differences depending on the climate or where you're located, there are some similarities that are the same for everybody. So thinking ahead a little bit where you're going and perhaps having a backup destination if you arrive there and it's quite busy, uh, thinking about who you're going with, so whether it's your family uh, and you have the ability to stay a little bit closer together, or if you're thinking about a socially distant walk with a friend, really taking the time to work through what are the preparations. Thinking about food, and as you said before, layering. We say dress like an onion. And then thinking about activities while you're there. So if you're going with your kids, doing a little bit of pre-preparation and maybe planning that scavenger hunt uh, or thinking about bringing an extra map so you can involve the people that you're with in the navigation. So we have some great resources, whether it's games you're looking for or just different ways of getting outside on our website. I definitely recommend going there and, and checking out the resources available. You know, during this pandemic, so many people have been cooped up inside, uh, going out less and less for, for everything, including, you know, the, the, the necessities, just making as few trips as possible. But it is, we, we all, I guess, feel this need to, to get outside, to, to be more physically active. Absolutely. So, I mean, research is out there. Being outside just makes you feel good. So we do have a challenge going on right now called the Be Outdoors Challenge. It is 20 minutes a day or about two hours a week. That is what our research shows will drive, again, just your body's natural response to being outside and being active. So again, just bringing some joy to this time and getting our bodies energized and active outside. Um, yeah, like we said before, I think that we're all looking for ideas, new ways, and just different things to try while we're still within this pandemic. You also have something that's been around for a couple of years now, I think, that, that you call Outdoors RX. What, what is that? Yeah, so Outdoors RX now, Families Outdoors. So it is a way to venture outside uh, with your family or uh, the people that you live with, uh, specifically for younger children. So really thinking about local resources and um, fun ways to engage together uh, and healthily engage in outdoor adventures. Really, and I like the, the, the original thing was Outdoors Rx. It's actually a prescription <laughs> that you were getting. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, we were working with different medical providers to actually write a prescription to engage in the outdoors. And so, I mean, you can read about it in newspapers, but 
um, there is a, a national obesity crisis. And so really thinking holistically about ways people can um, actively just engage and get your body moving outside. Let's talk about some of the resources that, that you have at uh, outdoors.org. Uh, that, that's the website for the Appalachian Mountain Club. Absolutely. So if you go on right on our landing page, there's some great resources and there's actually a resources and trainings tab. So it runs the full gamut. It's everything again from just those very activity driven suggestions. If you find that you have young children at home and you've already exercised, you know, all the ideas out there or if you're looking for more support, perhaps a guide to venture out with you. It's all right there on our landing page. Even even if you're a member, places to stay when you when you get out into the mountains in the Northeast. Absolutely, whether you're a member or not, you could be totally new to the organization. There's opportunities there. So we do. We have a number of lodges throughout the Northeast, uh, Northern New Hampshire, Maine, uh, New York, uh, very close to the city and accessible via public transportation. Um, because of the pandemic. They're kind of opening uh, one at a time. Some have remained open. So definitely check and use our contact service center. And I'm sure all of the precautions that are needed uh, are, are being taken there. But how, how has COVID-19 affected the operations of the Appalachian Mountain Club and, and yeah. all that you do? Just like everyone else, we've had to pivot and be really creative. And so um, really following state and regional guidance and using that as our foundation to just work through decisions. And like everybody else, we've really had to get creative and think about how to reopen our lodging operations to provide people with uh, a place where they can be confident and safe uh, and also use that as um, a backdrop for their outdoor experiences. And then the same with our programs. We've really just had to think creatively about how to support outdoor experiences, uh, thinking about little things uh, like still uh, enabling people to do gear checks at the start of a trip with our guides and just spacing people out and thinking about our group sizes for going outside and adventuring together. So again, just getting really creative and thinking about our parameters. And um, I've been so impressed across the organization with how people have come together and, and really put a lot of intention behind uh, how we can continue to support people in getting outside however they choose. What's the, what's the feeling there about what the coming months are going to bring? Is there going to be a, a resurgence of people flooding into yeah. the into yeah. the into the parks and on the trails yeah it's busier than ever any time um it's ever been i mean across both of all of our facilities and then also really regionally in some of the locations we for example help maintain trails and so i think that's going to continue there is this renewed desire to really spend time outside. So we're thinking creatively about how to continue to support people and in, in recreating responsibly through these areas. Um, and I think, you know, we're all reading the news right now and we are expecting with all of uh, kind of the vaccines coming up, people again, they're really looking to venture outside. So I anticipate it will continue. And even even local parks and, and local trails all around the country, people are are wanting to get outside. The only thing I guess you have to be cautious of is if you see other people, the, the natural tendency is to want to get together and chat. Just do it carefully, right? Again, yeah, it's just that pre-planning. So think about perhaps going to a local park and tailgating and take a little bit of time to be intentional about setting up those spacing parameters, making sure that you bring like a trash bag along so that you can dispose of waste properly, thinking about snacks and layers so you can sit there comfortably. Again, it's five, 10 minutes of planning, use the resources on our website or the support of people in person. And uh, there's definitely still safe ways to get out and spend time with your friends and family outside. Great ideas. And of course, you can find more still at outdoors.org. Colby Meehan, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Cooking with the power of the sun. Hi, I'm Fred Fishkin here to tell you about the latest innovation from my friend Patrick Sherwin and his great team at Go Sun Stove. 
The GoSun Fusion has arrived using the company's tried and true reflectors and a solar vacuum tube to get you cooking without the mess of charcoal, heavy propane tanks, or smoke. A really bright idea. And with an optional solar panel and battery storage and the ability to plug in at home or on the road, you really can use the GoSun Fusion to cook anytime and anywhere, day or night, rain or shine. I love what Patrick and his team are doing, and so will you. Want to learn more? Head to GoSun.co to check out all of the company's products and innovations, and use the code TEXTINATION to save 10%. That's GoSun.co.